designer and a pattern dress maker so guys in today's tutorial i'm going to be showing you guys how i made this dress it's a mermaid dress or you could call it a gold dress so imagine this dress in like a white fabric i know right it could pass for your wedding dress without further ado let's head right into the video to be having a poll on my instagram page which means you guys are going to have the opportunity of picking or suggesting my next video don't forget to like share comment and of course subscribe if you haven't let's grow this channel together i see your love i see your support and i don't take it for granted let's head right into this video so here are some of the things we're going to be using for this tutorial scissors we have our fabric three out of crepe and we're also going to be using our steel roller a marker our measuring tape and of course our paper tape we also have our pattern paper and our french curl so here is a pattern already drafted and we have our lines bring our camera forward and i already went in to like mark my lines i have a sweetheart neckline and Basically, I went in by 0.5 inches and I just blend that down to all that, like so. To have our lines, our bust, our under bust, and our chest line, we labeled our parts CF1, CF2, CB1, CB2. Just so when we're joining our pieces together, it's easier and we don't get confused. So I'm really just going to cut our pattern out. I already did that before. I actually tore um, my camera's record in while it wasn't doing the whole process of, you know, marking out the patterns. So I went into measured from the top line to the waistline. And I had 17.5 inches. Next up, we're going to be extending the lower part of our pattern, and which means we're going to be adding an extra paper. First off, we had 17.5 inches for our upper part and 21.5 for our lower part, which leaves us with 89.0 inches. For the full length of the front, it's going to be 63 inches, which is the CF. And for the back 69 inches for the CB I'm going to be showing you guys why and basically we're going to subtract that by 39 and which leaves us with 30 for the CB and 24 for the CF so what this simply means is the paper the amount of paper we're going to be adding at the lower part of the pattern is 30 inches so basically I'm just going to tape that down and moving forward we're going to extend our pattern lines so from the place where we um, added our paper we're measuring down 30 inches and extending that line so basically what i'm doing now is extending all our lines Thank you. 
So next up, what I'm going to be doing is measuring our 24 inches at the bottom and just basically ruling that down. So next up, I'm going to be connecting our 30 inches to our 24 inches. So now I'm just extending our lines. So next up, our shoulder to our nail measurement is 39 inches and we're going up by 4 inches and we're basically going to be connecting that with our ruler and from our new nail length, let's just call that nail length, that's our 4 inches we went up above, I am going to be taking 1 inch from there like so. So next up, I'm just going to be slashing those lines because we are basically having more lines and it can be a little bit confusing just so we know where we're cutting out from. Now we're going over to extend our line at the bottom. Next up, I went into panel our CF front which is our center front and we already know I'm creating this dashed line just so we know we could, where we're cutting out from and I'm going to be extending our CB line I went in by 1 inch and connecting that line down We cut our scissors and we're just basically just going to cut out our pattern. So we're cutting off our CF front and don't forget to cut off your dart. So once you're done with that, don't forget to label your patterns because this pattern can get a little bit tricky. So your CF1, CF2, your side, you take note of everything. I went in to extend our CB, that line, and we're just basically going to cut that out. Once that is done, we're just going to be folding up our CB pattern away, and we're going to be extending our lower part of our pattern which gives us that flare look at the bottom part so i'm basically just going to be taping all that in place and at the bottom i went in by six inches i'm connecting that with our ruler so you are connecting the point to 4 cm above the knee length which we had up there and i'm going to be cutting that down I'm going to repeat the same process on the other side, adding the same amount at the bottom, 6 inches. And I'm just basically taping that down so it stays in place and connecting with our ruler. So I took the measurement that we had where that paper is, like the paper tape and we're going to be measuring also the same measurement from our four inches above the knee length to our six inches below and we're just basically going to be carving that out which gives us a perfect goal so i went in to repeat the same method on the other part of our panel for our center front but this time we're not adding anything on our unfold line so we only added on one side so at the bottom guys remember six inches at the bottom 
and voila we're done with our front pattern we're going to be repeating the same step for our back pattern only that instead of adding six inches we're going over to add eight inches Your pattern is going to look a little bit tricky but remember guys we're going to be adding 8 inches at the bottom and connecting that to the 4 inches above the knee length. So I went in with a fresh paper which simply means we're going to be extending our panel. So guys remember we took 8 inches for our CB line and the CB line we took 8 inches from is where our zip is. So moving forward we're going to be taking 6 inches on the other part. I don't know if that makes any sense. Wherever we're taking the 6 inches is where the dart line is which means we slash in from the dart line you could actually go beyond six or eight inches you could go as far as ten it depends on your preference i did this because i was working with limited fabric and the fabric i was working with was a crap fabric and i just had to react so i need to work you know according to my fabric Repeating the same step, we're going to be adding 6 inches at the bottom and connecting it to our first seam above the knee length. So I'm just basically going to cut that out like so and we're done with our pattern. So our fabric is on fold which means we folded it in two and I'm bringing our patterns and laying that down. So guys, we're going to be marking our 0.5 inches for our sewing allowance and 4 inches above the knee length. We're going to mark that out. And at the bottom, it went out by 1.5 inches. This is just to increase the length of the dress. Moving forward, I laid each part of our pattern piece in place just to have an idea of how I'm going to fit all the patterns into these three yards.
for CF1, I went in with 1 inch on one side and 0 0.5 inch on the other side. So guys, the side I left the 1 inch is our side seam which creates allowance in case if your client or you put on some weight or the dress is too tight and you want to loosen it a bit that creates or gives an effect for you to loosen up a bit i always actually like to do that for my dress sometimes i leave as much as 1.5 inch so i'm just going to be connecting the lines and repeating the same step as we did for our cf2 the only difference is for the side seam we have one inches and on the other side we have 0.5 inches at the bottom we also have 1.5 inches For our CB, we are going to repeat the same step. For our side C, we are adding 1 inches also. And for the other side, we are going to add 0 0.5 inches. At the bottom, the same 1.5 inches. For our CB1, the part where we're going to be having our zip, our zip allowance is going to be 1 inch and the other side is going to be 0 0.5 inches. So once we're done with all that, we're going in with our scissors to cut our pattern out. So this is what our pattern looks like. I went to notch our 4 inches above the nail length like so. I did this for each part of our pattern. 
The leftover fabric is what we're going to use to cut the upper part of our dress. So we're going to pin our pattern in place and after that at the bottom part for joining we're going to have a 0.5 inches allowance and on the side we're going to have a 0.5 inches allowance at the top also a 0.5 inches allowance and I'm just going to cut that out. So we're going to be repeating the same step for the rest of our pattern piece. The only difference is that on our side seam and on our zip, we're going to be adding a one inches allowance. So once you're done with all that, your pattern should look something like this. Now we're going over to our aligning and we're just basically going to be doing a cutout from our first pattern. So once you're done with that, you should have four pieces of each panel. 
moving forward to the lower part of the dress we're not going to be doing a full dress lining we're going to be doing a half dress lining for the lower part this is because we do not have enough lining but trust me you could actually do a full lining so i'm just going to lay that down like so and put that in place so because this is not a full dress lining i'm just going to be cutting that out just a little bit below the four inches above the nail length So I went ahead to repeat the same step for all the panels for the lower bottom. We went to our sewing machine basically what i'm doing is labeling each part of our panels because it can get really confusing guys so make sure you label each part of your panels on the dress using a chalk and i'm basically just going to pin our lining down in place So moving forward, I went in with the dress and I'm basically going to be sewing that down, sewing our panels together. So guys, you need to know, remember the parts you added just 0 0.5 inches and the part you added 1 inches. So remember our side seam, we added 1 inches and to our zip allowance we added one inches take note of that while sewing interesting part about getting your measurement right is at the bottom line everywhere is even so this is what it looks like when it's sewn together we're going to be joining the other piece and repeating the same sewing process If you watch this video to this point, then why are you not subscribed? 
please subscribe to my youtube channel if you like this video please give it a thumbs up subscribe comment share with your loved ones don't forget to click on the dumbbell so you get notified when i post a new video thank you So what I'm doing here, I'm basically just pinning our front upper part lining in place just before I stitch. So once we're done with stitching the lining for the upper part of our dress, we're moving over to the lower part and we're just going to sew in our panels. So now we're going to be joining our two pace, which is the upper part of our lining and the lower part, and we're going to be stitching at 0.5 inches, half an inch. I'm just going to pin that down in place before stitching. Once you're done with this, it should look something like this and we're going over to give this a good press. Next up, we ironed an SD for our upper part of our dress on the fabric. 
this is just to make the dress have like a good form or shape I mean I love to use as these and I'm basically pinning each piece in place before we stitch So, so done with joining this we're going to be adding the upper part of our dress to the lower part of our dress and I'm just going to be pinning that in place and connecting the lines Once you're done doing that, you're just going to go in your machine and stitch that in place. So we're sewing on 0.5 inches, which is half an inch. So I went ahead to move the camera closer so you guys will have a glimpse of how I join, you know, both lines together. Next up, I'm going in my brown label and I'm going to be stitching that to our lining. Once I'm done with that, we have something that looks like that, and we're going to be joining our lining to our dress. So we're going to be facing right side facing each other so the right side of our lining facing the right side of our fabric and i'm just going to be joining both ends So once we're done with all the pinning and everything, we're going to be leaving 1.5 inches from the starting point, which is where we're going to be joining our zip and we're sewing on 0.5 inches.
feels very nice yeah so I went in with my breast cup which I'll be inserting into the into the dress and I basically inserted it and stitched that down so you could hand stitch this so basically what I did I just hand stitched it when the dress this is what it looks like and this is the bead I used and I measured this out like so I had 24 inches so I'm using this needle it's a very thin needle and it's used for beading I'm just going to use my regular red thread and you know start beading so the length of the bead was 24 inches the measurements I used and voila once you're done with it this is what it looks like thank you guys for watching see you in my next video the link to my instagram handle is going to be in the description box below don't forget to subscribe like and share with your loved ones thank you for watching